The Supreme Court handed the White House a meaningful victory today. It ruled that a travel ban affecting eight countries can go into immediate effect. That decision isn't final. Instead, it simply means the ban, which affects Iran, Sudan, Libya, Chad, North Korea, Somalia, Yemen, can remain in place while the courts evaluate whether or not it's legal. Of the nine justices, only Soda Sotomayor and Ruth Gader Gin Ruth Bader Ginsburg signaled they opposed letting the ban take effect, of course. So it's a strong sign it will be upheld when and if the court hears the actual case. Mark Stein, thankfully not covered by any of the countries listed in the travel ban. He joins us tonight. Great to see you, Mark. Hey, so, good to see you, Tucker. Uh, what does but this he mean? could ban me. They he could ban me. Well, because the, the president, I mean, you're right, it's a big victory. But if you take it in harness, with the last half hour. Essentially, you have had, since this administration uh, won a year ago, the permanent bureaucracy and the courts ganging up, basically, to cripple the executive branch. And the fact that uh, he had to go to court to get a temporary stay uh, in these two lower-level uh, court bans on, on his travel ban actually tells you something uh, about what an insane situation we're in. The statutory language is quite plain. Uh, the president has the authority to ban by proclamation any aliens or class of aliens. So he can ban me personally by proclamation. He can ban all Canadians by proclamation. Or he can ban classes of Canadians. He can ban Canadian tap dancers uh, because he thinks they're a threat to the American tap dancing industry. The language in the statute couldn't be plainer, and a horribly politicized judiciary, like the horribly politicized policeman you've been talking about earlier, ha has pushed language beyond its meaning in order to deny the president his most basic executive so, authority. So here's the trend that I'm seeing. Tell me if you see it, too. The least democratic parts of our government, which would be the courts and the bureaucracy, neither elected by voters, are getting more powerful. And the most democratic parts, the president and the Congress, are getting less powerful. So the democracy is actually withering right now. Absol absolutely. You have a permanent state. Um, uh, President Obama famously said in 2009, elections have consequences. Uh, the permanent bureaucracy and the courts are saying uh, to the people, elections have no consequences. Right. You can vote for, for whatever you think you want, but we're going to ban it. Uh, we're we're, we're going to go ahead and uh, conduct business as usual. And that's, wh and that's why this court decision um, is, uh, is, is actually, the fact that it's necessary is an affront uh, to any kind of self-government uh, by the people and for the people. But what's so funny? But our elites love that. I mean, they, it's so in their Orwellian turn, they keep warning us that the election of someone they don't like is a threat to democracy. Democracy dies in darkness. But the control right. of the federal government by people who've never been elected, whose names you don't know, the, the permanent bureaucracy, that's democracy? I mean, it's literally the opposite of what's true. Yeah, and, and what's disturbing to me is uh, you, you find this attitude in Brussels, for example, uh, where, where there's a, a bunch of civil servants that seriously think they know better than yeah. the uh, peoples of 28 nations. And the whole point about the uh, U.S. system is that it was created to prevent this kind of divide uh, between the uh, governed and the people. And this, and, and actually, I think they should have gone further, the, the Supreme Court. They, they should have, in a sense, skipped the temporary stay and just declared that this is obviously within the terms of the president's statutory authority uh, and that if you object to it, you might as well do what Democrats and the civil service seem to want to do, uh, and that is to simply pass a constitutional amendment uh, to say that in the event, God forbid, any Republican should happen to be elected president, uh, then the entire executive branch shall just be put in the deep freeze for four years and will cease to do anything whatsoever, because that's yeah. what they've been trying to do since last November. And that's basically what's happened, unfortunately. Mark Stein, thank you. That's a deep analysis. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot, Tucker.